What is up guys, bringing you another FortiGate tutorial here, this time on how to enable country blocking or some people I've seen referred to as geo blocking on your FortiGate device. So I'm sure there's multiple ways to do this. I'm just going to show you today how I have it configured on my FortiGate at home. And I just want to kind of go over, we're going to go over first the way to create uh, an address based on a country, which I'm sure most of you know, but we're going to go over how to do in the command line and the GUI. And then I'm actually going to provide a link to a script in the description below where it will create an address for every country um, available on the FortiGate. It'll automatically create an address entry for all the countries and then it will assign them to a group that way you can kind of use that you don't have to go in and and enter in all of the countries yourself manually just use this script and then you can configure it the way that you want to do it so we're going to start off by creating a an address for the united states so in order to do that we need to do config firewall address And then once you're in there, you're just going to edit. You're going to name it, whatever you want to name it. Um, I always use underscores or some kind of other uh, symbol instead of using spaces. And I would recommend you do the same. If you use uh, spaces in your address names, it will kind of cause issues. If you ever need to reference those names in the command line at some point in the future. So I always use underscore dash anything like that. So typed in edit underscore uh, United States under uh, United underscore states and then now after creating the entry we're going to set the type because you have to set the type to geography in order to be able to select a country um, when you're doing this through the command line so once you do set type you'll see geography as an option so we're going to enter that command and then now we're going to do set country and then if you hit the question mark you'll see a list of all of the countries that are available um, and all, you don't have to type in the full country name you just type in the two letter um, I guess abbreviation for whatever country you want to create in our case US is US and then that's it that's all of the details that you need in order to create an address entry for a country so I went ahead and typed in in to save it. Now we're going to go over to the GUI and just kind of show that the address entry was created. So as you can see, United States has been created here. I never assign my addresses to certain interfaces. That's a, definitely an option if you want to do that. Uh, but now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to create an address through the GUI. So for Russia, typed in Russia as the name. You're going to select geography from the drop down. And you just have to find it in the list. So all the countries that are available in the command line should be available in this list as well. You're going to select the country that you want and you're going to click OK. So that's going to be how to create an address for a country in the in the command line and the GUI. Like I said previously, there will be a script in the description below that will create addresses for all the countries available in the FortiGate and assign them to a group. So you can do with that, which you like. Save you a little bit of time there. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to create some firewall policies, right? So I always block inbound traffic from any problem countries, mostly Russia, China, um, Iran. There's, there's a lot of countries that are always hammering uh, most commercial firewalls trying to get in, whether it be HTTPS, SSH. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to block inbound countries. I'm going to select my WAN interface as the incoming and then my internal as the outgoing because I don't want anything coming from outside from, in this example, I just chose Russia. Normally I would list a lot more countries there, um, but I don't want anything from Russia coming from outside hitting my internal network. So that's why I put that as a source. And then service, I'm going to select all because I don't want anything coming from them. <laughs> Uh, so I went ahead and I hit deny and then you can put log violation traffic on just if you want to see who's trying to access uh, your resources. So there you go. Now I have my inbound block and again you can put a group of all of the countries as a source that way no outside country can access anything on your network. Um, you can you can just kind of play around with that. 
So now we're going to do an outbound, outbound block as well. Um, outbound block is a little bit more complicated than the inbound block. Some companies and web servers are hosted in other countries. So in putting this in a professional setting, I have noticed that um, you will have some users complain that they can't get to certain websites. Nine times out of 10, those websites are hosted in Canada or a different country. Um, so it's better to just kind of block a few of the countries on the outbound block, the real problem countries up front, and you can kind of tweak it as you see fit. So that's what we did here. So now no traffic can be, all traffic will be blocked that is trying to go to Russia. And I moved it to the top of the list as well, just to make sure that all of that traffic is denied. Nothing I should have to hit at my house. I shouldn't have to access anything in Russia for any means. So, all right. So once those two policies are created, there's one thing that you have to do in order to make sure, especially if you have um, VIPs, virtual IPs enabled on your firewall, um, the virtual IP routing table takes precedent over the firewall policies. So if you have virtual IPs enabled on your FortiGate device, the the traffic that's going to those VIPs will bypass that inbound country block and it will still get through. So in order to make sure that our inbound country block is working properly, we have to go into the command line. That's the only way to take care of this. There isn't a, an option in the GUI to do this. So we have to config firewall policy and we have to select the, the number of what our, the, the inbound policy we created which I think in this case was five. So we went ahead and edit. We're going to edit five. You'll see that that is the inbound country block policy. So there's one thing we have to do. We have to set match VIP enable. So what that's going to do is that is going to not allow the, the VIP routing table to take precedence over our firewall policies. And it'll hit this first. All right. So once you do that, you're going to hit in to save it. And now all of the traffic that flows uh, ingress and egress through your firewall should be protected the way that you want to set it up. Now, there is one other thing you have to do for accessing your firewall administratively. So even if you have this set up on your firewall, you may still see traffic in your logs coming from China or Russia trying to access the administrative um, interface on your FortiGate. So what you have to do in order to stop that is you have to configure a local in firewall policy, which you can only do through the command line. So the command for that is config firewall local in policy. And we're going to edit one. We're going to create a new entry. And once we hit set, we can see the options we have here. We're going to set the interface to WAN source address for this example, I chose Russia, but again, you could use as many countries as you want, or you can create a group with as many countries as you want and put that group here. Destination address. We're going to put at all. And we're going to set the action to deny. We don't want any services coming through from any of these foreign countries. So we're going to hit all here. Schedule always. Nobody should ever have to access administratively our device from a different country and we're going to enable it. So once that is done, we're going to go ahead and hit end. We can type in end and save that local end policy as you can see here. So now nobody can administratively, whether it be through any service can access our FortiGate device at all. That traffic will be outright denied. So now I'm going to show you just if you want to set up a policy for access, I'm going to show you how we do that here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new policy, config, firewall, local in policy, edit. We'll just, I just use two, but you can name it anything you want. Set the interface to WAN, set the source address to the United States, destination address all. Action accept because we want that traffic coming through. set the service. You can, you know, if you're only using HTTP or HTTPS, SSH, I just put all here, but I would, I would recommend putting only the services that you're going to use. 
set the schedule to always and enabled it. So now we're going to hit in to save it. And we're just going to take a look at how our local in policy looks now. So we have two local in policies, one at the top for Russia being blocked and the other one at the bottom for us allowing. Now it reads the local in policies from the top down. So if you need to move those, there are some commands for that. Uh, but it reads it from the top down. So uh, you have to make sure that, uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to move the, the United States one. It shouldn't really affect it at any, you know, shouldn't affect it at all, but I'm going to move number two before one. And if we do another show now, you can see that the United States is above Russia. So, and if you wanted to clone one of these policies, just for easy configuration, you can clone them. You clone whatever the, uh, the name is. I forgot to put two here. Um, but you're going to clone one, two, and then you would create whatever the new policy name is. So three, and then it creates a new entry for the clone, as you can see here. So what I usually do I'm on is I usually set, um, if I have a public IP that I know I'm going to be coming from, I will create an address for that public IP and then deny everything else. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing here. So for this example, we're going to set the, as you can see, the deny policy is all, but I went ahead and I allowed United States above that policy. So only United States IPs should be able to access my FortiGate. Everything else will be denied. And there are plenty of things you could do with this. Again, you can't do any of this in the GUI. This is strictly a command line tool, but it's very useful, especially if you want to control who is able to access your FortiGate device. I would suggest if you know that there's only a, if you have your FortiGate publicly accessible, I would suggest creating an address for any public addresses or the only public addresses you know that you'll be trying to access that FortiGate from. Create an address or address group and then create local end policies to lock it, lock it down. So now I'm just going to show you a little bit on, um, how to basically install the script that I created. For those of you not familiar with uploading a text script to the FortiGate, you can click on the, uh, the drop down under the username configuration and the scripts option. So once you're in the scripts option, uh, once you, once you enter this screen right here, you're going to go to run script and then just browse your device for the script that you, you know, if you downloaded the, the script for me, you would look for it in your downloads folder, open, and then you would click okay. And you should get that little green arrow that says success. So now, if we go and take a look at our addresses, we'll have an address entry or we should. Yeah. yeah. So we'll have an address entry for all of the countries that are available on the FortiGate. It also puts all of those countries into a group. I didn't put United States in this group just because I don't, you know, there's no reason to block United States traffic. Um, for me anyway, using, uh, you know, web traffic and all that, but there you go. There's your fortify group. And, uh, um, and, and as for this example right here, I just added that country block group as a source address for, um, the local end policy. So just to kind of show you, you can use a group here. Um, but yeah, if you liked the video, if you found it useful, if you found it helpful, leave a comment down below, like the video, please subscribe. And if you, there's any FortiGate tutorials you want to see me cover, or, you know, you want to ask a question or anything like that, go ahead and let me know. Uh, Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.